Our next topic is demand functions. And this is a very just a straightforward linear demand function. And our demand for rooms for a hotel is 200 rooms minus 3 times the price. Well, obviously, the most we can actually rent would be 100. So it would be the minimum of 100 or this function. So if we had a price of 0, obviously, we're going to the, the market's going to want to rent 200 rooms, but we can only rent 100. So it'll be the minimum of 100 or the result of this function. So it could go down to zero. If the price per room is too high, nobody's going to want to stay at our place. So let's go and see how this works. If we take a look at our, our profit, we can see that if our price is zero, people would want to rent 200. Well, we can only rent 100, so we end up renting 100 rooms. We run 100 rooms at a price of zero, revenues are zero, fixed cost is 1,000, variable cost is 1,000 because it's $10 per room, total cost is 2,000, profits negative 2,000. That's not very good. Well, let's take a look at what happens at 30 rooms. At 30 rooms, people want to rent 110 rooms. We only have 100, so we run 100 rooms. Revenues are 3,000. Fixed cost is 1,000, variable cost is 1,000, total cost 2,000, and we get a profit of 1,000. We want to maximize this, and as you can see, the maximum point here is a profit of $1,400, and we could change these so that there's a finer gradation between these and find a more precise max. And we will simply use this demand function in combination with our other model to do some even more sophisticated modeling. So let's take a look at what that chart would look like. As you can see here, we can have negative profits. What happens if we rent every room we have with a price of zero, we lose $2,000. Our profits maxim maximize at 40 rooms. They begin to fall off. Now, why are they falling off when we're raising prices? Because fewer people want to stay at our place. Eventually, we're priced so high that we get to the point where Nobody wants to stay at our place. In this one, our maximum, because nobody's staying with us now, we have no variable cost per room, so at the high end, the most loss we could have is $1,000, which is just our fixed cost. And finally, sensitivity analysis. This is where we're going to take, we want to understand the sensitivity of our of our profits to the various elements that we do have under our control. We obviously can change the price per room and we may want to take a look at if our variable costs are higher or lower, what is this going to do to our profits? How is our profit going to be changed depending on what happens uh, to these variable things, to these variables? Variable costs may go up and down. They may not be perfectly accurate. They may not be consistent. If we can save a little money, what would happen? Same thing with prices. Because pricing is a demand function that's going to rent more rooms at a lower price, we may be able to modulate these items and get a, an, an ideal profit. So let's see how that might work. If we chart this out, each one of these variable costs is going to have a profit curve, which will show you that at various prices, we will rise, rise, and rise, and rise. And obviously, the, if everything else being equal, a variable cost of 7 is going to give us the price, is going to give us the highest profit. That you know, just stands to reason. That if everything else, stays, the demand function stays the same, everything else uh, stays the same, then lower variable cost is going to give us the highest profit. But what if we had a situation where the variable cost was also incorporated into the demand function? We don't, mod we don't model that in this case, but you can imagine a scenario where the more money you're spending keeping the rooms clean, you may have more people that demand your rooms, that want to stay at your place. So you might find that if you spend more in keeping your rooms clean and putting nicer towels and things like that in your hotel, you might actually have people willing, more people willing to stay at your place at a higher price. So we can model these things together. For simplicity, we don't do that in this case. But let's go over back over to Excel and we'll just take one final look at sensitivity analysis and I'll show you a couple of quick things that may be helpful for doing this. First thing that we've done is we've got our, our basic variables up here, price, fixed cost, variable cost per unit, and now we have the calculations down here. 
So we have the number of rooms rented, which if you remember was the minimum of 100 rooms, or 200 minus the price times three. So remember that was our demand function. So that's gonna give us how many rooms are gonna be rented at, a very, at, a, at whatever price. If I change the price to 23, people wanna rent 100 rooms. If I change the price to 100, nobody wants to rent a room. Our demand is minus 100. So let's take a look at, now we obviously can't rent minus 100 rooms, but if they could, they'd be giving rooms back to us. So let's go back to 50 rooms. And our revenue is obviously our rooms times our price. Fixed cost is going to be our, it's going to be set up here. And variable cost is simply going to be the rooms number 50 times the 7. So how did I get all these values down here? We have variable costs on this, on the column here. And we have this row here. We have our various prices per room. And we want the system to automatically calculate these values in here. Excel has a function called data table, which allows you to make changes to these variables up here. For example, 234. And you notice that all of this, this entire table changed, as well as my curves down here in the chart. Let me show you quickly how to do that. The first thing that you need to do is, in the corner of the table, you need to have the variable that you're modeling that you want to have show up in all of these. So as I change these values here, and change these values here, and change the values here in my assumptions, I want the profit to be shown up in this area. So when I set up my data table, I'm just going to create a small version of it up here. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that my profit is in that top corner of the table. Now I can, I can uh, reference that somewhere else so the formula doesn't actually have to calculate to here like it does for this table down here. I can just point to it like I did with my equals uh, sign. And across this row, I want to put one value that changes. In this one we put prices. So let's actually do something a little bit um, in between these. Let's use uh, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Well, we already have 36, so we'll just model these prices that are kind of in between these. And down here, let's go down our variable cost, and let's make those uh, 750, 8, 8, 50. And we'll just do a simple data table like this that'll have, we just want these values here filled out. So all I have to do now is highlight that entire area and go into my data menu to table. In my row input cell, I am going to highlight the variable that I want to be substituted right there. So it's going to take the 33 and plug it in there. It's going to take the 34 and plug it in there. 35 and plug it in there. And then I want to do the same thing in this column right here. So I'm going to plug in the 7.5, the 8, and the 8.5. And when I say OK, it's going to give me my data table. Now I can pretty it up by changing these colors so they match over here, just so that I can keep track of what I'm pointing to. You may also notice that I have one highlighted here, and I've simply used conditional formatting. This is going to be the highest profit in this whole area, so it just really jumps out at you. I did that just, I kind of cheated a little bit here. I copied that value down here, I actually pointed to it with my uh, uh, equals symbol using the max function. So I highlighted this entire area and then I did a maximum of that. So we could do the same thing up here. We could say equals max and highlight all of these guys here. And then if I use my conditional formatting on these cells here, format, conditional formatting, I'm going to simply say that any of these values is equal to this value up here. I want to do something crazy to it. So let's format it so that we have a nice pink shading in the background. All right, so you can see this number matches this number, so there's my maximum value. So if I charge a price of $35, and I have a variable cost of $7.5 per room. My profit is going to be 
2378. And you'll notice this is a table function here. And you can't really change any of these values in here, but if I change my fixed costs, make that 250, you can see that my profits are changing. Okay, well, I hope this has been very helpful and that everybody has had a chance to um, work through these learning objectives, and hopefully this will be a, a great help for any of you who are trying to use just some basic Excel functions to do some business analysis. Thanks, and have a great day. I appreciate you listening and watching.